Hey there, it's Kara Jane with I Scream for Buttercream, and today we are talking about measuring and weighing ingredients for baking cakes. So when baking cakes, it's really important to measure out your ingredients the correct way, because if you do it wrong, you're gonna get a totally unintended result. You're gonna get a cake that's too dense or doesn't rise properly, and so today I wanted to go over all of my tips on how to measure correctly. So first things first, let's talk about the measuring versus weighing controversy. And it's really not a controversy, but people kind of have their own opinions here. And they're, they're pretty firmly planted on what side they are. Um, I'm actually not that way. Um, and I'm going to talk about why I am not so particular about that. Okay, so first I wanna actually tell you that technically speaking, weighing ingredients is more accurate than measuring by volume. And so the difference is weighing, you're actually weighing your dry ingredients with a scale and measuring by volume is if you were to spoon it out into your measuring cup and leveling it off, that, that's actually measuring by volume. So it's cups, um, you know, half a cup, quarter of a cup, stuff like that, instead of weighing the, the amount of ounces or grams if you're using the metric system. Okay, before you panic and start feeling bad about yourself because you don't weigh ingredients, I just want to say right now that I am not snobby about this issue. So, yes, weighing ingredients does get everything to come out the exact same way every time. Um, and that is great if you want to do that, but I'm just telling you this is not the end-all be-all. So let, let's break this down a little bit. So when I develop recipes for my website, and I'm assuming that there are a lot of other cake recipe developers or baking recipe de developers um, that do the same thing, but when I develop a recipe, I use volume measurements, and I do that because at least here in the U.S., that's what people are used to using. And so I do realize that weighing ingredients is more accurate, but the general population is just used to using volume measurements like cups. And so I really want to make it easier on people. And sometimes when people just see a recipe and it's got all these different weights in it, they may not even have a scale in their kitchen. And it just may look too complicated or too quote, professional for them to use. And I don't want my recipes to be seen that way. I just want them to where anybody who goes and sees a recipe on my site, they can think to themselves, I can make this. And so that's what I, that's what I do is I just make them based on volume measurements. Now, if you're a diehard weigher of ingredients, please don't jump on me about that. I know that it's really not that complicated to weigh ingredients, but what I'm saying is that to some people it looks or it seems more complicated. And frankly, you really don't have to weigh every ingredient to be able to get a good cake. You can measure them out in volume measurements and it most of the time it works just fine. And yes, weighing can get more accurate, but it's really okay if someone wants to just use volume measurements. Okay, so let's get back on track here. So my point is, is that my recipes on my site are tested using volume measurements, as are many other recipes on a lot of sites, especially in the U.S. And frankly, this is what most people are used to measuring with here. So if you've ever looked at a recipe on my site, you'll notice that there's also a button under the recipe ingredients that you can click and it converts everything into metric. So it'll say, you know, whatever, however many cups of flour there are, it will convert it to grams for weight. And so people are able to convert it that way if they need to do that. And if you're in the U.S. and you, you don't know grams, which I never do, um, you can go into a conversion online somewhere and convert the grams to ounces or however you want to do that. So when using that button that sort of converts it to weight measurements in, in grams per se, that really is not an exact science there. That's just a computer program that's just essentially crunching the numbers for you and giving you their best guess. So it's still not 100% that you're going to get the exact weight measurement with that. So if a person really wants to be technical about it, you can hit that button and let it give you the gram measurements. If you're in the U.S., you can convert that then into ounces, however you want to do that. And you can 
what you can do is measure out your entire recipe first with the cups like I have written on the website or anyone has written on their website really. You can measure it out how they have written the recipe and then once you've measured each dry ingredient, weigh it out and then write down those weight measurements and then if you like the way that the recipe turned out, then you'll have the weight measurements and then you can use those weight measurements for subsequent times that you make this recipe and you'll know that you'll have the exact weights each and every time thereafter. And that's really technical. And like I said, most people don't want to really get that technical, but if you do and you really feel like weighing out your ingredients, you can do that. So the main thing I want you to know is that it's your choice. You can use the volume measurements that are written as the recipe is written, or you can convert them to weight measurements. Now there are some baking blogs or cake recipes that are already in weight measurements and that's great. They're already, it's already done for you. But if it's written in volume and you're worried about getting a, a perfect cake, you want to follow the recipe how it's written. And you know, you're never going to get an exact true amount when you use a conversion button. You're still going to have to kind of test it out. And so my point is that if a recipe is written and tested using volume measurements, switching to weighing the ingredients does not necessarily mean it's going to be better because usually that recipe was tested out using volume ingredients. And so it's up to you whether you want to go back and forth and convert them. That, that is your, that that's your choice basically. And so I'm not going to beat somebody over the head because they want to use volume measurements and I'm not going to feel bad that most of my recipes are written with volume measurements. Okay, so now I can step down from my soapbox and let's get into the proper way to measure cake ingredients. Okay, first let's talk about the supplies that you're gonna need. And you're gonna have measuring cups for dry ingredients, measuring cups for liquid ingredients, and there are two different kinds there. Measuring spoons and then miscellaneous scoops and spoons. Okay, so the liquid measuring cups are just what are pictured. It's just the measuring cup. It actually has a spout on it. You, it's usually clear. You can see where you've poured it in and it kind of gives you the different lines. And these are dry measuring cups here and they're more like scoops instead of a cup. So let's start with measuring liquid ingredients. Okay, and liquid ingredients are easy to measure. Essentially, you're just gonna set your measuring cup on a flat surface, pour in your liquid, and you wanna kinda bend down at eye level and then check to see if that liquid is at the level that you need it to be. Okay, let's talk about measuring dry ingredients. And this is where it can kinda get a little tricky. So I've got some dry ingredient measuring cups here and some measuring spoons as well. And of course the measuring spoons you can use for both liquid or dry ingredients, obviously. And then of course there are other options that you can use as well. Okay, so this is just my flour container. Let's talk about what you don't wanna do first. And what you definitely don't wanna do is you do not want to scoop your flour out of the container or the flour bag because when you push down, you're packing in that flour and you just packed in a bunch of flour into your measuring cup. So when you pack that flour in, you're essentially going to add too much flour to your recipe. If you pack the flour in, which means you're adding extra flour than you need to for your recipe, you could possibly get a dry cake or the texture could just be too dense. Um, all kinds of things could happen. So you definitely don't want to do that. What you do want to do is you want to use another scoop and you want to scoop your flour or even pour it out of the bag into your measuring cup. And then you want to level off the top and you can level off the top with the back of a knife, which is what I do sometimes, or you can just use your finger and level it off. But you just want a flat top because you don't want to add any extra. And then you'll just pour this directly into your bowl that you're mixing. Okay, and I wanted to show you that I also like to do this with my confectioner's sugar if I'm making icing or some kind of buttercream. I also don't pack it in when I'm, when I'm measuring it. I'll just spoon it into a measuring cup. Now for white sugar, it really is not that vital that you pour it in. You can if you want to. A lot of times I'll just grab it like I'm doing here with the scoop and scoop it into my measuring cup because it's easier that way. Um, sometimes you could just pour it directly out of your sugar bag into your measuring cup or you can scoop it out. It really, the sugar is just really, it really doesn't matter. If you're using brown sugar, generally they do want you to pack it in the cup. So you would just take your measuring cup directly into the brown sugar bag and make sure it is really packed well into that measuring cup. 
and to measure baking powder and baking soda. So here I have the baking powder and I'm just using my teaspoon and I'm going to scrape the top against the very top of the little canister there and that's how you measure the baking powder. And literally you're just scooping it out and it's totally okay to scoop, to scoop this out. It's not, the volume isn't high enough to make a huge difference whether you're scooping it or, you know, sort of spooning it into your measuring spoon there. So just scoop your measuring spoon in, this is the baking soda, and then kind of run it across the top of it to flatten it out. So for the cocoa powder, I do the same thing that I do with my flour. And I will just spoon it into the measuring cup and then flatten off the top with a knife or if you can use your finger. And one more thing I wanted to go through. You can, and I, I do this a lot, you, it's really more accurate to do it the way I have previously showed you where you would spoon it into your measuring, your dry measuring cup and then level off the top. But sometimes I will admit that I'm really just, just feeling lazy and I just use whatever's clean or whatever is closest to me. And sometimes I will use the actual volume measurement cup or the liquid measurement cup and I will just spoon in my flour into that and then sort of get the best, sort of level it as best I can. So it's really not going to be as accurate because you can't really, you know, level off the top with a knife or anything and you're just really kind of eyeballing it, but it really kind of gets you close enough. But I, I do do this quite often, but I would suggest to really get technical on you and, and to, to make sure that you're getting a close, a really close and specific measurement amount to, to use the dry measuring cups and then level off the top. Okay friends, I hope this was super helpful for you in explaining the different methods for measuring and weighing out ingredients for your cakes. And I really hope that it kind of gave you permission to not be so hard on yourself if you're not weighing out your ingredients because you really can get a really good cake without having to weigh out your ingredients. And I want everyone to know it is possible for the average person, for anyone, to bake a good cake. And you don't have to have this special equipment. You can always, of course, if you want to go a step beyond and you want to weigh out your ingredients, you're welcome to do that. But if that has ever been intimidating to you, then don't worry about that. Just use the volume measurements and it's perfectly fine. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions for me or there's anything that I skipped or forgot, make sure to list it down in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer that. And I will see you next time.